Hi guys, um, thank you for joining me today. Um, let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done. And I thank you for what you're about to do. And I thank you for what you're already doing. Lord God, fill, fill us today with your spirit, with your love, and let our time together talking about this great movie, um, being lightning, Lord God, let me just um, bring out the points that you said um, to me earlier this week um, about this movie and you um, in the most sustained way as possible. And Lord God, I pray that you will just endow me with your spirit. Speak to me, speak to me, touch every heart, touch every soul, touch every mind. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, hi guys. Um, today's sermon is called God and the Greatest Showman. Um, I went down kind of a rabbit hole this week, and um, I don't usually go down YouTube rabbit holes. I don't go down Instagram rabbit holes. I don't do Facebook rabbit holes. Uh, where you click and click and click and click. But for some reason, for some reason, uh, this week I did. Um, it started on Monday night with an innocent uh, click on a um, on uh, a reaction video for the reaction uh, of the "This Is Me" song uh, with Kiala Settle. And if you guys haven't seen this, this video, not the reaction video, but the actual video with Kiala Settle in the green light rehearsal when they tried to get the movie greenlit, you should really see it. And there's also one with Hugh Jackman singing from, from now on, which was totally awesome. So... From that reaction video, um, I just um, surrounded myself this week with uh, The Greatest Showman, which, which is a movie years ago. And I rem remember years ago me doing a sermon called uh, This Is Me Taking a Song Taken from That Movie. Anyway, this week, while while watching the sermon and surrounding myself with the movie extras and just diving into this movie and how it was made, I just, the Lord began to speak to me through it. I told you the Lord begins to speak to me in several weird ways, um, and this is one of the weird ways he spoke to me this week. and. This sermon is about what he taught me, um, not only through the story of the movie, but the things surrounding the movie, and that's what I want to share with you today. Now, the story, The Greatest Showman, um, is about P.T. Barnum, which, who is, um, who, who actually birthed the circus. Um, he actually came up with the concept of the circus and um, brought all these people that were in the dark uh, to the forefront. All these people that were laughed at, all these people that were um, just ridiculed by society for being different or having different uh, disabilities um, to the forefront, and he brought them out, and um, he created this world of a circus. And um, 
one of the oddities, her name in the movie was Letty. She was the bearded lady. She was played by Kiala Settle. And first, let me talk about the backstory, and then I will go into what God spoke to me regarding the movie. Uh, Kiala Settle is a Broadway performer. She was on Broadway. She did a couple things on Broadway. She even, um, from in 2003, she even won a Tony for one of her performances on Broadway. But still, even in all the winning, she always felt afraid to step out. Um, and really show off her beautiful voice. And I was watching an interview during my rabbit hole this week. I was watching an interview with Kiala and he, and she and the interviewer was even asking her, um, wasn't that a great moment? Wasn't that a whatever when you won the Tony for this musical. Not the greatest showman, but it was another musical. And she said, no, not really. She said, I was about to actually leave New York um, when I won the Tony because that she said, well, those accolades don't matter to me. I was still afraid to step out afraid to sing, afraid to, you know, really come from the forefront because I'm an introvert and I'm always afraid and self-conscious of, I guess, what people will think of her or whatever. She said, I'm always afraid and self-conscious. And so when it comes to this song, this is me. Okay. The, the, the lyricist and the melodist, like people, people who, the people who actually wrote the song, uh, Justin Paul and Benji, I can't remember, I can't pronounce his last name, uh, who wrote the lyric, who wrote all these songs, uh, actually wrote this is me on a plane. What happened was um, they were working on another song and it just didn't work out. It really didn't work out. This other song that they were working on for the oddities and coming out. So um, the director um, Michael Gracie said, we need a song, we're, we're pitching to the addicts, uh, we're, pitching to, we're pitching to the Fox executives today, we need a song. So on the plane, they wrote, this is me, with their headphones and their MacBook and a little keyboard. They came up with this wonderful song. And watching the green light performance, it's so moving. After the sermon, I will, I will post it somewhere. It's so moving because knowing that they tried for months to get a song like "This Is Me," and knowing that at the right moment. This song came, and because of Kiala's voice, and because of uh, uh, what she brought to the table, not only did she do a fantastic job of bringing the song forward, but she actually got the part. And she said, when they played the song for her, she and she said, "Oh, who is singing 
that. Um, and she said, well, they said, well, you are. She said, well, no, I'm not. And then they asked her again and again and again and again, and they finally wore her down. <laughs> and then she, she, <laughs> she agreed, and there's this funny story. She said, if you get me a bottle of Jameson, which is, for those of you who don't drink or whatever, Jameson is hard whiskey. I think it's whiskey or some kind of hard liquor. She said, if you get me some, some Jameson, I'll do it. So the next day, the director showed her the bottle of Jameson, and she was so timid and scared. And if you watch the video, of her seeing that it's so moving because I think she was in my mind she was picturing all the people that told her no or whatever um, and I'm saying all of this to say at the right moment you can try something try something try something but at the right moment before God says yes no matter how or you try, it won't happen. But at the right moment, when God's yes meets your timing, it creates his purpose. I'll say that again. When God's yes meets the, his timing, it creates your purpose. It creates a moment in time. Nothing happens before it's time. And I'm not saying you shouldn't work, you shouldn't prepare. But that is the first thing God taught me when looking at um, this is me. And uh, when, like, because she said that she spent years just doing Broadway and doing things and timid to step out into what she was really meant to do. And it seemed like when she was singing, she embodied the actual song, and it was amazing what happened. If you haven't seen the video, I'll post it um, on my channel. So, 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 not on my channel, on my Facebook, I will post the video Although this will be on YouTube, I will post it on my Facebook. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just type in my name in Facebook and you'll, and you'll get me. And you'll be able to see the video there. Or just, or just type in uh, Piala Settle, this is me, and you'll see the video come up. It's absolutely phenomenal. This, this whole movie... Not even just the story, but not even just the story of the movie, but how it was made is so incredible. Um, back in 2009, um, the director, M Michael Gracie, was seeing Hugh, uh, Hugh Jackman at the Oscars, because I guess he was hosting that year. and. Um, Michael Gracie said, oh my gosh, what a showman. He reminds me of P.T. Barnum. And so that set off a chain of, of meeting with Hugh Jackman and uh, getting this whole movie started and off the ground. And it took them nine years to get this about seven years, sorry, seven years, from 2009 to 2017. That's when the movie was released, um, to get this movie off the ground. And I'm, I, I'm, listen, I'm listening to this, watching this story, and I'm saying the greatest thing that I was taught this week from this movie is the lesson in persistence. And I just wonder how many days in that 
seven year period of trying to get this movie off the ground did they say oh my god will this ever happen how many failures did they have to go through i remember uh with benji no i remember with uh the songwriter justin and ben and benji um and they weren't even uh call, called on to write the entire score what happened is they met hugh jackman and then two days later they came up with the first song called a million dreams and they just eventually over time ended up writing the entire score they were uh commissioned to write the score it was one song at a time one chorus at a time one person at a, at a time and it says and uh michael gracie said every other i don't think it was michael gracie it was someone else that said when we commissioned for a song we went to other writers and we went to other people but they just kept no matter who we got the song that they sent in was right on the money so i i'm saying this to say that whatever god has planned for you is for you no one can take take that away from you and be persistent don't give up i just i just um i have to wonder how many times did hugh jackman or michael gracie want to say you know what this is just too hard i i wonder how many other projects did hugh jackman do at that time sometimes when you're working towards uh, what what god has planned for you and before you actually come to actualization of it you you have to do other projects like on the side but that is still your main goal how many other movies did hugh jackman do during that time did uh Zac Efron do at that time how many other offers did all the people responsible for that what we have to do at that time in that seven year period so they just didn't give up every time they hit roadblock they just pushed through it and i think that's what god is calling us to do is to just not ignore the roadblock not admit not not say that oh it just exists but just to push through it feel scared feel the pain but push through it and um and that's what they did and that's what how this movie got made uh this movie was really a labor of love just the time and the effort and the money and the whatever they had to do but they pushed through every obstacle and got it made that was the main thing that i learned um from this from this week just 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 to push through even when it uh feels hard even the actual story of pt barnum uh the fact that he just tried so many businesses tried so many things tried to get so many places and he he just um kept on trying kept on dreaming kept on believing that something would break through and it did and the lord is saying what dead what dreams that you think are dead 
am I trying to bring alive in your life? And because there are things in you that are that you think are dead. There are dreams in you uh, that you think are dead, but are not. They're just asleep. And he and God is saying right now two things. Uh, he's saying, "Come alive, wake up, stop living in this." dull drum and thinking that life is so hard, life is difficult. It is difficult and it can be difficult and it can be hard. But he's saying, in the difficulty, you need to come alive and wake up and see what's around you. When you see what's around you, around you, you understand that whatever you're going to, whatever you're facing is not it's not as bad as you think it would be, and it's, it's about perspective. And what I like about this movie is uh, when P.T. Barnum did all the circus and everything that's going well and everything started to pick, uh, pick up, he still wasn't happy. He still wanted more and more and more and more. And that reminds me of the society we live in today, that we still want, we want more of this, more money, more adulation, more, more likes, more loves, more views, more, more of this. And we, we tend to not really understand what we have right in front of us. And that was P.T. Barnum's downfall, at least in the movie. He kept on wanting more and more and more and more. And there's nothing wrong with wanting better for yourself. But in the midst of wanting better, there's also appreciating the gifts, the talents that you have around you, that you see, that you can see in you. So. There's nothing wrong with wanting better or greater or, or more for yourself, but in that, still appreciate the gifts and the talents around you. Appreciate your family, appreciate your friends, appreciate those in your circle that, that you, you are around, and in that, you could you can still want more, you can still want better for yourself, but, but still appreciate those around you in wanting better, in wanting more. Do not lose sight of the beauty that is already around you. And that's what the Lord is saying. And He's also saying, to you dreamers, because I'm a dreamer myself. He said, dream your a million dreams. He said, he says, I've given you vision, I've given you dreams for a reason. And don't discount the, the dreams I put in your heart, I put in your spirit. He's like, Continue to dream, continue to aspire from that, in that, and don't be afraid of it. And he wants me to say also too, anything's possible with him. If he's purpose for you, all those dreams you're having of starting that business, all those dreams you're having of getting married, all those dreams you're having that he won't, uh, won't, uh, don't seem to go away. He's saying the reason why they don't seem to go away is because they're his dreams for you. They're not your dreams. I don't believe we have, we have dreams. I believe, I believe if they're from God, they're his dreams. And he's put them in you for you to bring forth his glory. 
And I think when you understand that those a million thoughts and those a million dreams that you're thinking of and the reason you can't sleep or the reason whatever you can't think of anything else is because he's creating um, a righteous frustration in you that is that is meant to push you uh, to achieve his, his glory because I um, the Lord was talking to me this week about the different kinds of frustration he said sometimes there are wor there is worldly frustration which is you want what the world has and it's not really his kind of goal for you but it's your goal because you see what everybody else has and you want that for yourself you're like why can't i have that Honey, you can't have that because it's not for you and it's not what he wants you to have. And there is godly frustration. Like, there's a frustration when you see a problem and God gives you the solution to that problem in your spirit. And you're, and you're dreaming of ways to um, do it or whatever. And you're frustrated because you you're not at the place yet where you can see that happen. He said, don't worry, your frustration is not for my, not. He's saying, I've given you that godly frustration. Keep it and know that one day when they need you and I'm ready for them to see you, they will see you. But before then, prepare it. Get prepared, go to school, do what you need to do. And he's saying, never stop dreaming, never stop believing, never stop being, uh, being filled with godly motivation and godly frustration. Because um, sometimes God puts in you a problem that you're meant to solve for him. And that's where the godly frustration comes from, because it's the problem that God put in you to solve for him. And worldly frustration is that you want to solve this for you. So first you need to, to uh, differentiate, is this a God frustration, that something that God wants me to fix, or is this a worldly frustration that, that something that I see in the world and that I want? And he's saying, if it's a godly frustration, it will come, come to pass in my time. And if it's a worldly frustration, it will be fruitless. Like uh, Solomon said, it will all be vanity. And so, some of us are dealing with uh, worldly frustration. So, some, like, that's where comparison comes, comes in. That's where social media can be harmful because it drives in worldly frustration. And all social media does, I've said this before, all social media does is it's a tool it's neither good nor bad it's benign it's the people behind it and all social media does it is it makes it easier to be uh to be nasty and to show off what you have with your pictures and and to make other people like it or love it or whatever but all those calories all that frustration you're feeling scrolling to Instagram, that's worldly frustration. That's not, most times, it's not a godly frustration. It's a worldly frustration. You're like, why can't I have that kick those kids? And why can't I have that boat or whatever? 
But you don't, you don't know what that life is really like. You see a picture, but behind the picture, you don't know what that life is really like. Do you really want to know that that couple is close to divorce and they just went on that that trip because they uh, someone paid for it? So they went, but they slept in separate bedrooms? No, you don't. Do you really want to know that, that one of those kids are struggling with an eating disorder and one of those kids are do, um, struggling with school and another one is struggling with bullying? No, you don't. And even if they're a perfect, happy family, you don't want your life and, and the Lord is saying to, to stay the course. What they did in this film and what P.T. Barnum did in his life was stay his course. And he was persistent in, in whatever he did and I think that was the most awesome thing ever. And he's saying, never stop. Be persistent. You know what I called you to do. And it doesn't matter if it takes months or years or whatever. Just be persistent. Dr. Brian Stiller. Hi, Brian, if you're watching this. Um, you will often see him on my comments if you scroll down. You will often see him give a like or whatever. He gave me the best advice. He said to me, he, and I said, what's the best advice you could give me starting in ministry? Because I always like to ask people who've been in ministry for a while, what's the best advice or whatever. Um, this is a question that I don't only ask ministers or whatever. I ask any older person, what's the best advice you could give a younger person like me? And he said something very profound. He said, just keep showing up and be persistent. He said, no, no, he just said, just keep showing up. It doesn't matter if you get so many views or anything. Just keep preaching. Just keep sharing the word of God, how you share it. And that's what I've been doing for uh, 11 years. First on YouTube, then on Facebook, now on YouTube again. Which, which I post to Facebook every week. And that's what the Lord is saying today. Just be persistent. Be persistent. Don't give up. Don't give up on that vision and that 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 dream because he says in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 3, write the vision, make it plain. And he says, if it tarry, wait for it. If it takes long, who cares, wait for it. If you have to take side jobs in the mid, middle of working for your dream, wait for it. Not your dream, but it's his dream. Because I believe we, we don't have dreams. He gives us the dreams that, that he wants for us because they work best with our gifts and our talents to show forth his glory. And I believe that any dream that he gives us is first and foremost to show forth his glory. And then it is to affect people's lives in a positive way. And I believe that's what he's called uh, us to do today. So, thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate you for, for spending your time with me, for taking your time for these 11 years to listen to my sermons. I really appreciate it. I don't take it lightly that you could be watching anyone else and you, cho and you choose to spend your time with me. It is an absolute honor and privilege uh, for me to be doing this. And 
even doing this is a lesson in persistence too because there are times when I'm tired where I haven't had the best week myself but I keep showing up I keep uh, preaching a sermon I keep pouring out to people and it's a lesson in persistence and am I where I want to be yet? No, but I will be persistent because I know that one day when I am ready, God will put me into where he wants me to be. Until then, I will be persistent. I will be on this channel every week except for two weeks at Christmas. And then one day God will do what he wants to do in my life. And he's already doing what he wants to do with my life. And if he does not, I will, st even if he doesn't move me from this channel, I will still keep preaching. I will still keep reaching. I will still keep preaching the gospel. Because that's what people need to hear, whether it be like, uh, 10 views, whether it be 2 views, whether it be 15 views, whether it be a million views. I don't care. Because the way I look at it, I don't have to hustle people to subscribe to my channel. Because people know what reaches them. People know what they love. People people know what what uh, what reaches them and what they can learn from and I don't have to hustle to get views on my channel because the way I look at it is God will bring the, the people that are supposed to see me at the time they are supposed to see me. I don't need to hustle, I don't need to put in and there are some times we need to push through, but there are some times where you need to just let go. I did say to push through earlier in this video, and there are some times where you push through. Some days where you feel tired, but you do it anyway, you push through. And there are some days where you just have to let go and say, God, it's yours. It's your deal. This is your thing. And let him just take you the rest of the way. Some of you have been pushing so hard for so long. And uh, where some of you saying, you have to let go and let me do my thing. And some Others of you, he's saying, more pushing will pay off. So for some of you, he's saying, let go, let me do my thing, you're holding on too tight. And some of you is saying, he's saying, more pushing will pay off. Um, so, so that's two words for someone. So guys, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I really appreciate you. Thanks. Bye. I'm going to try to spread so I'm caught in the tail. I'm going to say the floor, I'm going to try to let I am brave, I am blues, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. Look out, cause here I come. And the marching on to the beat of drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Zero. There are those of you that are hiding in the background that are too afraid to come out and say this is what God has called me to, to, to be. 
this is who I am. And he's calling those of you who are going through that to step out and to know that he's got you. Back to the This Is Me video that I was talking about. At the beginning of that video, Kiela was so scared, but when she came into the mic, when she came from behind the music stand, this thing just came over her. I believe it was the Spirit of God just came out over her and just um, started taking over her body. And, and that's why it was so powerful because there was a Spirit of God in that room and there's there there are going to be those people who will say um, secular songs can't invite the Spirit, but I disagree. I believe that God can minister, God can endow anything He chooses to, and that we need to take the limits off of what we think is God and what we what we think is not God for Him to be able to really do his thing and I think once we do that we'll see miracles we'll see signs we'll see wonders we'll see ministries that we haven't yet seen come to the forefront there are so many people out there with with divine ideas for ministry for different kinds of things that are too scared to come out because they think, oh my god, this is too weird, this is too this. This cannot be God, because I haven't seen this before. But in saying that, it's driving you crazy, it's keeping you up at night. It's a godly frustration, and you're like, why am I feeling this way? Why can't this idea let me go? This idea can't let you go, because it's something that God has put in you to first, show his glory, and second, to help other people. And it's, it's an idea, it's something that the world and the church has never seen before. And you just need to come out from your computer, come out from your tablet, come out from behind whatever you're, you're hiding behind it, and do it and rock it and start that channel and start that business you have something to say to the world and it's time that you speak it out and speak it out on the same way and just say you know what like me love me hate me this is me think it's godly think it's not who cares i'm not here to impress you i'm here to to advance the kingdom of God. And if this purpose advances the kingdom of God, who cares what you, whether you think it's godly or whether you think it's not, that's fine. You do what you do and I'll do what I do. Because what we don't realize is what reach, what reach, what doesn't reach you can reach another person. And what doesn't reach another person is what can reach you. Because we're all different and God has a soldier for every different kind of person. And God knows what to reach his people in. All these different ideas are to reach someone for his kingdom. And we, we need to stop being judge and jury saying, that's not God or whatever. How do you know? You have no idea. You only know what your what your small mind can conceive of. God is so much bigger than your prejudice, than your prejudices, than your understanding, than your even what you've known before. God wants to break the mold, as I said a few weeks ago to realize that there are no limits to what he can do. And who are you to tell a person, oh, this is not God, this is not God, the God can't use that, or God can't use you. You're, 
You are nothing to tell a person that. How dare you tell a person that? You're not God, only he is God, and you have no idea what he's going to use that person for. So do God a favor and do yourself a favor and be quiet when it comes to another person's purpose. You have no idea what God has called another person to do. And if it's not God, they'll find out in time. You don't need to be somebody's personal Holy Spirit saying, Oh, that's not God, or God can only use you in this, or whatever. No, no, no. Take the limits off of God, and if it's none of your business, leave the person alone. They'll learn in time. They may fall, they may make some mistakes, but that's how we learn. The best way to learn is by mistakes. We just need to understand that we're not God, and He's put in each person something different to do that represents his kingdom. He has different kingdom representatives and, and all of that. So thank you guys so much for being with me. I really appreciate it. Thanks. I love that.